He was the reason the Mute Animals were inspired to save the world from the actions of mankind. He was essential to the team, but what they didn't know was that he needed them more than they needed him. In today's video, I will be talking about the two versions of Jaguar, the one from Archie Comics and the one from IDW. Jaguar was created by Steve Murphy and Michael Dooney in 1989, very likely as a rejected toy idea for Playmates. His story seemed somewhat inspired in the real-life activist, Chico Mendes, who advocated for a more balanced planet and the integrity of the Amazonian rainforest. Chico was a victim of the deforestation in the state of Acre, in Brazil, in an attempt to raise more livestock. This deforestation was both an ecological and a sociological disaster, as many families depended on the rainforest for their livelihood, like rubber tappers. Chico Mendes was assassinated in December 1988 in an attempt to silence the voice of his movement, which only made his cause stronger. To talk about Jaguar, we need to first talk about his mother, June Tara. Her parents were Spanish missionaries that were trying to convert the Mayoruna tribe along the Javari River. This didn't go well for them, as the tribe killed them. Now an orphan, June Tara was raised by this tribe. She had a wild spirit, always looking for something else. Whether it was adventures or knowledge, she was not the type of person that would live an uneventful life. Restless, she wanted to take the path of the Four Winds, a quest for knowledge usually undertaken by shamans. But the Mayoruna tribe was against her becoming a shaman, as this type of quest was only for men. Despite that, June Tara decided to abandon the village to take the path of the Four Winds. The first wind was to the south, to the serpent, where she would need to shed her past like snakes shed their skins. The second wind would be to the west, where she would need to face death in a jaguar temple. There, she met the jaguar spirit without hesitation and without fear. The spirit was impressed by June Tara and considered her his equal. This is when their spirits came to know love and jaguar was born. Jaguar would learn many things from his mother but it wouldn't be long until she became restless again. With two more paths to conquer, she left Jaguar behind when he was 12. She went to the north, towards the dragon and the wisdom of the ancients, and then to the east, to the eagle and the sun. Jaguar would never see or hear from her again for six years. By the time Jaguar made his debut in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number 14, with a cover date of September 1990, he was 18 at some point in time. He met Chico Mendes, and they fought for the fate of the tropical rainforest. But the fight got violent. A group of mercenaries hired by Mr. No were behind the assassination of Chico Mendes. Jaguar hid in the Jaguar Temple, where he used to be worshipped, until the day April O'Neil, who was investigating the assassination, was kidnapped by those mercenaries. This was also when Jaguar met the Ninja Turtles. Together they freed April O'Neil and became friends. According to Steve Murphy, the whole point of April getting kidnapped in this story was to make her start on her journey of independence and self-defense. She would later train with Master Splinter. This was done to separate her even more from the Fred Wolf cartoon incarnation, as Murphy had no interest in writing damsels in distress. In unclear continuity with this story, Jaguar would also appear in two issues of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles magazine. In these stories, Jaguar and the Turtles seemed to recognize each other but the stories didn't really fit into the Archie continuity. Now let's address the language issue. June Tara's parents were Spanish, and this is the reason Jaguar spoke Spanish instead of Portuguese, despite living in the Amazons. But when he met the turtles, he changed easily to English. Not only that, he knew other indigenous languages as well, so maybe he knew how to speak Portuguese, but he never had the chance to use it. In his first appearance, it was stated that he was near Colombia, so this could also explain why the mercenaries were speaking Spanish. Or maybe someone got confused and thought people spoke Spanish in Brazil, and they had to retroactively explain why he didn't speak Portuguese. But this is only a theory of mine. A very likely theory. Jaguar and the Turtles would go on to meet Dreadman, and both of them would stay in Brazil after the Turtles returned to New York. Dreadman would become a much-needed friend after the loss of Chico. But one day, Jaguar and Dreadman would meet Man Ray, Leatherhead, Wingnut, and Screwloose, and they would band together to defeat the invading forces of Maligna. 
Mondo Gecko would join them and together they would form the Mighty Mutanimals. For a more in-depth explanation about this group, check out this other video in this channel. One bit of story I didn't go too deep in that video was the first five issues of the Mutanimals regular title. In these issues, Jaguar and the Mutanimals would embark into the path of the Four Winds after learning from his father that Juntara was kidnapped at the end of the Four Path. The Mutanimals would go face the snake, who would make Wingnut face his trauma of losing his parents right after losing his metallic wings. Skrulus would trick the snake into hypnotizing itself and they would escape, but Wingnut would realize that the snake helped him get rid of his trauma. He was able to shed the weight of his past. They would then face the Jaguar, where Man Ray would prove he wasn't afraid of death by helping his team defeat one of Death's attack. Death as in one of the four horsemen, he was the one who kidnapped Juntara. And speaking of Juntara, she would finally sneak out, only to discover that all of this was part of Mr. No's plan to get revenge at the Mutanimals, Kid Terra and the Turtles. The Mutanimals would then go face the dragon for the ancient wisdom he held. The dragon's name was Glyph, and he was part of an ancient extraterrestrial race that got into a conflict with another one. And after destroying their home and each other, he was the only survivor of his race. For some reason, what the Mutanimals learned from this story was that they needed to bring big guns with them, which was very convenient considering they were really going to use them in the next path. Jaguar proposed agreeing to a truce, which, as Mondo Gecko figured out, was impossible to apply to this situation. I feel like the idea of the Mutanimals going through the four paths was pretty good, and it would have helped the readers relate with them. We can see part of this being better executed on the Snake episode. But as the episodes progressed, it felt more like someone asked Murphy to hurry up and add more action. I understand that there was rarely editorial intervention, so I am really not sure why things got so sloppy after the second episode, especially because of the way this journey would end. But more on that later. They arrived to the final path, where they met Azrael. She would tell them that death had been drying the area into a desert wasteland. It was a place full of lakes, including Lake Resurrection, which was the last stop for those who had followed the four paths. Azrael would take them to Juntara, and a battle would be unleashed against Null's forces. As explained in the Mutanimals video, this is when the turtles would come in to help and all together would face the four horsemen. It would also be revealed that Mr. Null was pretty much a demon. June Tara and Kid Terra would be essential at putting an end to the four horsemen, and Azrael would bring Kid Terra back to life, albeit in very poor health. June Tara would take care of Kid Terra, and Jaguar would finally reunite with her for a while. But June Tara wanted to continue her journey to become a person of knowledge. The two would hug, and she would literally say goodbye, my lonely child, I love me you, and Jaguar would respond, I love me you too. Mother, goodbye. And this is why writers need to talk to Spanish speakers before writing Spanish dialogue. June Tara would leave with Kid Terra, as she was the only one who could take care of him, and thus, Jaguar would end up alone again. Of course, he wasn't completely alone anymore. He had friends now, many of them. He had the Mutanimals. So it may sound pretty bittersweet, but a few months later, when all the Mutanimals, including Jaguar, were killed, they all died together. It is somewhat comforting to know that, unlike his late friend Chico Mendez, Jaguar didn't die alone. Of course, according to that vision from Null, maybe all the Mutanimals ended up in hell together as well, suffering for all eternity. But let's assume that that wasn't the case, shall we? But what about his mother? Well, we never saw Juntara again. Kid Terra formed some kind of group to fight for the planet, but Juntara was out there looking for knowledge, and she probably never knew that her son was dead. She said goodbye to him, not knowing that she would never see him again. On retrospective, it feels odd that the Mutanimals didn't bother in finishing the Path of the Four Winds with Juntara. As I said before, there was a lot of potential in that story, but it wasn't well executed. I feel like low sales forced them to change their plans. The Mutanimals and the TMNT titles would get cancelled, but Steve Murphy would continue to work at Mirage Studios. In 2008, a Jaguar toy was pitched to Playmates as part of the Global Mutant Mission series, but it was rejected once more. 
A year later, Viacom would buy the rights for the Ninja Turtles, Steve Murphy and Michael Dooney would try to buy back the rights for Jaguar and Ninjara, but it wouldn't be possible. Just like with June Tara, Jaguar was separated from his creators forever. Many fans were annoyed after learning that a Jaguar action figure was rejected twice. This is why the fanbase was jumping from joy when NECA announced an action figure in 2022. Maybe one day IDW will bring back the Archie universe, and who knows, maybe Steve Murphy would come back to it. But in the meantime, there is a new version of Jaguar, a very different one. In this version, there was a creator god, Brahma, who conceived two siblings who would operate within his creation, one would maintain and the other would destroy. They became creators of life, birth and hunger, but after a few extinction events, they joined forces to create a pantheon of demigods, wise and powerful enough to manipulate and intervene in the settlement of creation. The pantheon would then become IDW's version of the Endless from Sandman. The pantheon was created by Steve Murphy for the main Mirage continuity. You can learn more about that version of the pantheon in this other video. The story got more complicated after that, and I will probably talk about it some other day. All you need to know is that Jaguar was part of this pantheon. She was a valiant soldier of strict honor and swift justice. Despite being immortal like her siblings, she was considered the weakest link because of her savagery. Since the dawn of time, the pantheon played a supernatural game of conquest and chaos until their ancient civilization, let's call it Atlantis, was destroyed in a cataclysmic event. They all took different paths after that, and some got bored of that game, like Jaguar. Despite her despise for humans and mutants, she allowed herself to be worshipped by a group of humans named the Guardians of the Forest, indigenous protectors who sworn to exterminate the plague of corporate thieves who illegally plundered their jungle home for a profit. This is where the similarities with Archie's Jaguar are the most obvious, not only in the kind of alliance and mission he takes, but also in that they were both worshipped as deities. But this Jaguar was a warrior and pretty much an anarchist. Her story is still in progress, and she may have a role in the upcoming Armageddon game. Because of the decompressed storytelling of the IDW series, very little is known about Jaguar and she has still to play a role in this universe. In the spirit of Jaguar's passion for the rainforest, visit Cipher.org the Center for International Forestry Research website to learn how humans can live in a more balanced planet. Thanks for watching.